but this one is going to be um, 03 is going to be the same as previously uh, and then you get out uh, this expression down here so those are the first two columns of our linear velocity Jacobian the only one we've got left to do is the component contributed to by joint number three which is our prismatic uh, linear translation joint the linear velocity uh, sorry the linear joint three the prismatic joint three is a lot easier the Jacobian contributed to it by it is just uh, z2 as defined in reference frame zero uh, and we get this from the third column of the T30 matrix uh, and the first three elements in that third column uh, and that's just what you get minus C1 S2 minus S1 S2 and minus C2 uh, and that forms the third and final column of our linear velocity Jacobian uh, which we have at the bottom left in general form so this is not for any specific configuration this is just the the general form of the Jacobian Alright, so now let's uh, plug some numbers in. Um, so let's uh, deal with the uh, position and configuration of the robot arm as is shown in the diagram. Uh, let's have uh, joint one rotating at two rads per second. So we're doing the forward, um, we're using the Jacobian, not the inverse Jacobian. So we'll have joint one rotating at two rads per second, uh, joint two rotating at negative one rads per second, and joint three uh, locked at two meters. So Joint 3 is going to have no velocity. Velocity is going to be 0. So we're subbing in numbers. So uh, this is going to be our Q1 dot. Uh, this is going to be our Q2 dot. And Q3 dot is going to equal 0 because it's not moving. Uh, we're also going to need to work out what our theta 1, theta 2, and uh, what's our third one? what theta1 and theta2 and L3 are equal to. Uh, theta1 is pretty easy because the rotation from the x0 to the x1 uh, axis, uh, well we've got the x1 axis here and the x0 axis, we can see they're um, parallel, so theta1 is going to equal to 0 degrees. Uh, theta2, well theta2 is the rotation from the x1 axis to the x2 axis. So it's, a, it's an angle of 90 degrees. Now, is this a positive or a negative? Well, if we use our right-hand rule and we observe uh, where the Z1 axis is, uh, we can see that it's a rotation of negative 90 degrees. And L3 is just stuck at 2 meters. It's not changing. So these are the numbers uh, that we plug into this matrix. Uh, and if you plug that all in, you get this answer here. Um, but we also need to then go, well, velocity of our tool point is JV times our Q variables. So our, our joint variables, uh, joint 1 is 2 rads per second, joint 2 is negative 1 rads per second, joint 3 isn't moving, so it's 0 meters per second. And uh, if we multiply this all out, we get our answer. So the velocity of the tool point in the base reference frame is 0 meters in the x0 axis direction, 4 meters in the y0 direction, and 2 meters in the z0 direction. And that's our answer. So, uh, sometimes you have to use uh, numerical methods to do um, some of the stuff like finding uh, the inverse of the Jacobian when an analytical method is not feasible. Uh, so you can use techniques, uh, numerical inversion techniques. Uh, one of these is uh, Gaussian elimination, uh, which is just a, an ordered process of essentially uh, simultaneous equations. Uh, but you should check that your Jacobian square and not sing non-singular first so that there is possibly an answer. Um, if you're trying to find the derivative of the tool point position, if you've got a complex geometry of your arm, uh, this can be quite uh, complicated. Uh, so you might use something like uh, vector methods uh, to compute the Jacobian elements uh, numerically. Uh, so you don't, you avoid uh, using trig, uh, actually, you avoid explicitly using signs and causes and so forth. So here we've got an, an inversion example. <clears throat> 
where we have a desired uh, tool point velocity of 0.42. So this is the answer we got before. Uh, and what we want to do is find the joint velocities. Uh, so we've already got our Jacobian for this particular arm um, configuration. Uh, so we can invert this. Uh, inverting a 3x3 three three matrix is quite a bit more involved. Uh, I just use MATLAB to invert this, um, but you can do it by hand. Uh, it'll just take a little while. Uh, so our equation for Q dot, our joint variables to achieve this tool velocity, uh, is the inverse Jacobian times our tool point velocities. Uh, if you multiply all this out, uh, you get back to our original joint variables of 2 rads per second for joint 1, negative 1 rads per second for joint 2, and 0 meters per second for joint 3. And remember joint 3 was fixed, so that's fine. So we'll do a force torque example once again with a three joint a robot. Uh, and the question here is to find the torque. So torque's going to be a, a torque at the joints to support a three kilogram load at the tool. So we have our linear velocity Jacobian already. Uh, we know that from our previous analysis, theta one equals zero degrees, uh, theta two equals negative 90 degrees and L3 equals 2. So we've got all of those terms, so we have uh, Jacobian already worked out, uh, and that's what it's calculated at the bottom. So for the last part of this talk, I'm going to talk about how you can use the uh, Jacobian, which is a very useful matrix indeed, to do some static force and torque analysis um, on robot arms. So the approach you take here is to consider a robot arm in equilibrium, so it's not moving, it's, it's holding something at the tool point, uh, and, and nothing's moving, uh, and you t think about virtual work um, done by the tool point and virtual work done by the joints. So work is when you, you apply a force over a, a distance or when you apply a torque over a rotation. Uh, so in this equation, we have a force times a virtual displacement uh, delta P, uh, equals a torque, so this is the torque of all the joints, times a virtual displacement delta theta. And what we do is we can transpose um, both of these force and torque um, terms uh, in order to then uh, introduce, uh, we know that delta P uh, equals the Jacobian times delta theta because the, the change in the tool point's position is related to the change in the joint angles by the Jacobian. So if we uh, substitute this in, uh, we have force transpose times the Jacobian times the delta theta equals our uh, torque transpose times delta theta. Uh, we can get rid of both of the delta thetas because uh, they're on both sides. So we have force transpose times the Jacobian equals the torque transpose. Uh, and then if we transpose everything, again, we get torque equals the Jacobian transpose times force. So this is a general term for working out the torque in all of the joints of our robot uh, based on the transpose of the Jacobian for that robot arm and the force at the tool point. So we've got our general uh, expression for the torque equals the transpose of the linear velocity Jacobian times our force at the joint. Now, what's the force at the joint? So that's what we have written here. So this is defined in the base reference frame, so uh, in our Z0, X0, Y0 reference frame. Uh, and we know that the force is down this way uh, with 30 newtons because um, we're talking about newtons, not kilograms. Uh, and so this is in the negative z0 direction, so that's why we have negative 30 here. Uh, we have our Jacobian transpose from before, uh, and we multiply this all out, and we get our answer. So this is the torque experienced at joint number 2, which is 60 newton meters. But we're interested in the torque we need the joint to apply to resist this, which is the opposite. So that's why we put a negative here. Joint 2 requires uh, a torque of negative 60 newton meters to support the load in this static configuration.